There are two classifications of malfunctions, high speed and low speed. Neither of these is safe to land and must be dealt with immediately. The reason for the categories is to give the skydiver a reference as to how much time he would have to deal with these malfunctions. Also discussed at the end of this section are unusual deployments of the parachute which are not considered to be malfunctions. In these situations, the parachute has opened, but there is a minor problem with the open parachute. In most of these cases, they are easily corrected and the parachute can be safely landed. In all of these cases, there is adequate time to react and deal with the problem, but there is never time to hesitate or waste. High-speed malfunctions occur when none or only part of the parachute deploys. The amount of drag created is minimal, and generally this means the skydiver remains at or close to normal freefall speeds. Each of these requires a prompt decision and accurate use of your emergency procedures. A total malfunction occurs when there is no deployment of the pilot chute or main parachute. The total malfunction is considered to be a high-speed malfunction since nothing is slowing the skydiver's freefall speed. The total malfunction appears in the video to look very much like a skydiver in freefall as the main parachute is still in the container and the pilot chute has not been deployed. A low-speed malfunction occurs when all or part of the main parachute has come out of the container but has not taken the proper rectangular shape, is not flying straight, is not controllable, or is otherwise unsafe to land. These low-speed malfunctions are sometimes called partial malfunctions. The partial deployment of the main parachute will somewhat slow the skydiver's speed, which in turn gives the skydiver slightly more time to assess the problem. Regardless, a prompt decision and accurate use of emergency procedures is still important. Do not be made complacent by the term low speed, as the speed at which the skydiver would impact the ground would still cause severe or fatal injuries. Having both the reserve and main parachute deployed can occur due to the skydiver initiating the main deployment at a very low altitude. In this case, the AAD may activate, causing the reserve parachute to deploy along with the opening main. In some cases, two parachutes out can be caused by hard spiraling of the main parachute at an altitude which causes the AAD to activate. Both of these scenarios are easily avoided by very obvious means. First, always pull on time. Second, begin emergency procedures by 2,500 feet and third, fly the parachute conservatively when below 1,500 feet.